What's going on guys? Today we're going to be theorizing how things would have changed if Marley had won during season 1 of Attack on Titan. As many of you know, the main conflict of the series started when the Warriors began their mission to steal the Founding Titan, and we've seen on many, many, many occasions how they've come close but couldn't quite finish the job for a variety of different reasons. In season 1, five years had passed since Marley's initial attack, but everything began to change when Eren was revealed to be a Titan Shifter. This reveal had countless repercussions that we saw play out, including Irvin's suspicion that there were more shifters in the military, and the MPs arguing with scouts to determine who gets custody. Looking at things from a Marlin perspective, Eren being a Titan was a great thing, because now the Warriors had a tangible target they needed to capture. Of course they didn't know for sure that he had the founding Titan, but at this point all three Warriors were just desperate to return home, so by capturing Eren at least they could bring back something. Annie in particular wanted to return to Marley to see her father again, which is why she ambushed the Survey Corps during the 57th expedition. After a lot of running and a lot of fighting, we eventually got to this moment where she destroyed the Attack Titan, and this is where I want to begin from. For you manga readers watching this video, let's assume this is a totally alternate universe where anything can happen, and for you anime only viewers, there won't be any spoilers because, like I said, this is an alternate reality. Don't forget to colossal smash that sub button as we are on the road to 300k, and also drop a like if you want to see more content like this. Okay, so we're picking up immediately after Annie defeated Eren in their one-to-one -one fight, which occurred in a separate area of the forest to everyone else. The only reason Mikasa is there is because she heard Eren scream and turned back, and the same is also true for Levi, who arrived not long after she did. Everyone else was told by Irvin to withdraw from the forest and get back into formation, with the goal being that they return home without further casualties. Now, going back to Annie, with Eren in her mouth, she would now be attempting to escape the forest, and the Ackermans would not be far behind. In the main timeline, Levi was easily able to defeat the female Titan, but suffered an injury in the process due to him protecting Mikasa. In this new timeline, the only way I think Annie could succeed is if the captain somehow isn't able to defeat her, and the only realistic way that happens is if his injuries are more severe. For argument's sake, let's say that in this split second when Levi is reacting to the pain, Annie follows through with her attack and sends him flying towards the tree behind her. That should kill a person, but Levi being Levi, I'm sure he'd do some kind of quick maneuver that only results in two broken limbs. I know Irvin was able to use ODM gear with one arm in the main timeline, but in this case, Levi has broken both his left arm and his left leg, making it significantly more difficult. While Mikasa is an amazing fighter, she showed earlier in the battle that she's just not on Levi's level of speed, meaning Annie now has the extra time she needs to harden around her nape and mouth. With his injuries, the captain would no longer be in fighting shape, but he'd realize that Mikasa is not going to defeat the shifter by herself. Therefore, his orders would be to return to the group, as collectively they have a much better chance of saving Eren. By joining with the rest of the scouts, you'd have great minds who could think of another plan, and other strong soldiers who can help out trying to take her down. After he calls out to her telling her to come back, she would no doubt refuse to leave at first, but with enough talking I'm pretty sure he could convince her to fall back. Mikasa would carry Levi in the same way that he previously carried her whilst using ODM gear, and I don't think this would be hard because look at him, he probably doesn't weigh that much. While the two Ackermans leave the area, the female titan would still be sat down slowly continuing to regenerate as Eren remains inside her mouth. Flash forward to outside the forest, and these two would have joined up with everyone else and urgently informed Irvin of the situation. The commander would know that without Eren there is no point in returning home, since his titan powers are the key to reclaiming Walmaria. By losing Eren, you also lose the best chance of defeating the titans, hence why I'm certain Irvin would put everything on the line to get him back. Instead of retreating, the new plan is for the scouts to quickly ambush the female titan as she exits the forest. Levi will estimate where she's going to come out based on her previous path, with Mikai Zakaris acting as support since his sense of smell allows him to know when titans are approaching. The survey corps would then move out immediately and they'd be following Levi's directions as he's being pulled along in a cart. Inside the forest itself, the female titan is continuing to regenerate but it's taking longer than usual due to her tiredness. By this time in the day, Annie had been sprinting and fighting for significant periods, so much so that Levi already noticed she had slowed down. With her being in this state, we should ask ourselves how exactly is she planning to return back to Mali? The answer is actually pretty simple, but in order to explain it, we must flash back to when the Warriors first arrived on Paradis. In the source material, Magath told them that the Malian army would be anchored on Paradis at the full moon. This scene was excluded from the anime, but what it means is that once a month when the full moon is out, a Malian ship will be at the wharf waiting for the Warriors to arrive. This was confirmed to be true during Season 2, because when the full moon appeared, Zeke, Peak, and the Malian military arrived on the island that same day. As such, Annie's plan right now is to return to the wharf with Eren, just in time for the ship's arrival within a couple days. When looking at the map, there is still a huge distance between where she currently is and where she plans to go, but luckily she won't have to do this by herself. Ryder and Bertolt are among the scouts heading to intercept the female titan, yet unknown to everybody else they are secretly working with her. Remember, when Annie first appeared she attacked the scouts from the right wing, cause that's where Reiner informed her that Eren would be. 
Of course, Eren wasn't there since Reiner and Bursot were given false information, but the point is they are trying to help her catch him. With the Attack Titan now in Annie's possession, these two will do whatever it takes to make sure the mission succeeds. This is unlike the main timeline, where they didn't get the chance to defend Annie because of where they were positioned. Had they made a move back then, they would have given away their identities without a guarantee of success, but this situation in the new timeline is much more favourable. Moving on, the scouts would continue to move around the forest in the direction Levi instructed, however they would soon hear an insanely loud scream coming from within the trees. Naturally this is the female titan using her ability to attract pure titans, and it works even quicker this time around because many of them are in the forest already. Even though she's tired, the female titan's size and endurance means she's able to outrun the titans behind her, at least so she's able to make it to a safe location. Annie would call them to act as insurance, since this horde could deal with the survey corps if they tried to ambush her again. Right now her goal is to escape the forest and reach Walmaria, at which point she'd use ODM gear to ascend the wall with Eren in hand. Once on top of the wall, she'd have the rest of the day to properly recover without worrying about the titans on the ground, and then when it's night time she'd begin the journey to the wharf. At this particular moment, Annie doesn't know when or if her fellow warriors are going to make a move, so right now she's planning to do it by herself, but if they join in, then obviously that would be a big help. After hearing the female titan, the survey corps would keep going, but this time in the knowledge they'll likely have to deal with pure titans as well. Commander Irvin would therefore have to think of a new strategy, and based on his risk taking nature I have a solid idea of what he would do. Earlier in the day, the scouts had two weapons able to subdue the female titan, the first being the cannons and the second being Captain Levi. In the current situation neither of those options are available, so Irvin would plan to use a small amount of pure titans to stop her instead. The idea is that once the female is out of the forest, the elite scouts will cut her down from the legs, which is a realistic goal considering what already happened. What the commander would want is for a select amount of maybe 3 or 4 pure titans to attack the female while she's down, since eventually that might force the person inside to come out. The commander knows the female can't maintain her hardening permanently, so it's guaranteed that she'd have to exit the titan along with Eren at some point. The main gamble of Irvin's plan is that he's relying on the scouts to not only cut any down, but also restrict the amount of pure titans that reach the female titan. If too many get her, then clearly Eren and Annie could actually be eaten, so the fate of humanity rests on how effectively the scouts can kill those other pure titans. Anyway, Mikkei alerts the scouts around 10 seconds before the female titan appears, with the elite group getting ready to attack. At this moment, Reiner and Bertolt would no doubt be sharing nervous glances, since it's really all or nothing. If they choose to help Annie, then the plan better work because they won't get a second chance. On the other hand, if they think they won't be successful, then they'd rather keep their identities a secret so they can capture Eren another time. Reiner in particular would be feeling incredibly nervous and conflicted due to his split personality, meaning for once, Bertolt might be the one who has to make the hard decision. The female titan then emerges from the forest intending to head to Walmaria. As usual, I'm sure Annie would have one hand protecting the back of her neck, but the skill of this group would be enough to chop her down. A few seconds later, titans also start pouring out the forest, with Commander Irvin giving a roaring speech to the rest of the scouts, likely something about the fate of mankind or something like that. People like Jean and Armin would head towards that threat, whilst Mikke joins in to provide backup. Mikasa and the commander would stay on top of the female as she slowly crawls along the ground, with one or two pure titans starting to approach the female's body. Irvin would warn the person inside that their only option is to either reveal themselves or get eaten, but he promises that if they come quietly with Eren, then they won't kill her. These words from Erwin would definitely be sincere, because he knows whoever is inside this titan likely has valuable secrets that he wants to learn. In the back of his mind though, the commander would be wary if the female could transform again for a third time, but due to her tired state he's cautiously optimistic that she can't. A small group of pure titans then start eating the female's legs, it is now that Mikasa gets really desperate and shouts at her to let Eren go. Reiner and Bertolt remain relatively close by watching this whole thing unfold, since they would have volunteered to guard the injured captain Levi. I imagine Bertolt would be heavily sweating at the sight of the female's body being eaten, while Reiner looks like he's about to vomit or cry or maybe both. Annie continues trying to fight off the titans, and her erratic movements make it so that Mikasa and Erevin have to retreat back down to the ground, uh, probably close to where Reiner and Bertolt are standing. In her hopelessness, the female looks over and makes direct eye contact with Reiner, which visibly shocks him into action. He'd reluctantly take a step forward as if he's going to rush in to save her, but at the same time he hesitates due to his conflicted mind. This gets the attention of Erwin who asks if Reiner is feeling okay, but Bertolt covers for him by saying that he just really wants to get Eren back. This is when the moment of truth occurs, since in the background Annie punches a few titans away to give herself some space. Billowing smoke then emerges from the nape of the female, and out of it we see Annie emerge with Eren in her arms. Until now, the commander was the main person who suspected there were titans among the 104th cadet corps, but to people like Mikasa, this reveal of Annie being a titan would make no sense. Even with her desire to save Eren, she'd be seriously confused right now, meaning the first person to take initiative and move forward would be Irvin himself. 
The two other warriors would follow immediately behind the commander, and with Titans crawling closer to Annie and Eren, she would shout out to Reiner for help. I believe this has to happen since Annie is in a desperate situation and the armored Titan is best suited for quickly grabbing her up. Of course everyone in the area would be taken aback by this, with Irvin turning around to see Reiner behind him with a newly determined look on his face. Before any scout could reach them, the warrior stabs the commander in the back prior to biting his hand and transforming into the armored Titan. As that's happening, Bertolt would have sped ahead to reach Annie and you know he'd just ask her if she's okay and check if Eren's breathing I guess. Now, as painful as it is to say Commander Irvin would die, in a situation like this Reiner cannot let him survive. Besides being the brains of the Survey Corps, he was also the first person who was going to reach Annie and the warriors couldn't risk what might happen next. For all the warriors know, the commander could have decapitated Annie straight away before grabbing Eren, like they just don't know what's about to happen, so the only guaranteed way to save her is to kill him. By transforming into the armor titan, Irvin would be finished off by titan electricity which is something that's happened to several people in the main timeline. Bertolt and Annie would then use ODM gear to jump onto the armoured, with Reiner shielding his friends as he sprints further into Titan territory. At this moment, each member of the Survey Corps would be feeling a mix of grief, disgust and confusion at what they just witnessed, but Levi would remain the most composed, ordering what's left of the scouts to go after Eren and avenge the commander. One thing I should point out is that unlike the main timeline, Ymir has not yet been revealed to be a Titan shifter, and I don't think she would be. Her main goal right now is protecting Krista or Historia and unlike season 2, she's not had time to strike any kind of deal with the warriors. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below but in my opinion she'd keep her cards close to her chest and not reveal her titan form. Inside Reiner's hands, Annie would have told her comrades about the plan to rest on top of the wall but obviously they need to lose the survey core before they can do that. Out of the 3 shifters they have, the female has the best endurance for long distance running so it's essential that she gets this recovery time before they start the journey to the wharf. When it comes to getting rid of the scouts, the Colossal is the only weapon they have that can do this quickly, however Annie is skeptical if Bertolt has the balls to kill off his friends. She probably tried to backhandedly motivate him in the same way that Reiner did in season 3, and hearing this from his crush, Bertolt would probably be like, yeah I can do it. I reckon eventually he'd come to the same realisation he did in the main timeline, which is that he knows the scouts don't deserve to be killed, but he has to do it anyway because the world is just that cruel. With the Survey Corps in hot pursuit, the warrior's new plan is for Reiner to throw Bertolt towards their pursuers and then the Colossal will do a controlled explosion to wipe them out. Remember, back in season 3, he was already going to blow the place sky high without any negotiations and the only reason he stopped was because he saw Reiner was hurt. After that, Armin tried to start peace talks like he always does, but in this new timeline Bertolt is at the end of the line, he just wants to go home and these 10 or 15 scouts are the only people standing in his way. For that reason he follows through with the mission and after Reiner throws him, he blows the remaining Survey Corps members to smithereens. Yes, Mikasa, Armin, Levi and whoever else are beloved characters, we love them very much, we don't want them to die. However, in a realistic alternate timeline, there's nothing they could do to avoid something like this. If they're chasing after Reiner on horseback and then Reiner just turns around and throws Bertolt, well what can you do at that point? It's like realising someone's about to shoot you after they pull the trigger, by then it's just way too late. In this alternate timeline, the warriors end things before they reach Wilmaria, with the Colossal being trusted to deliver the finishing blow. In terms of what might happen afterwards, for a start I think Eren would lose his mind realising he's been betrayed since he had no idea these three were titan shifters. The main timeline shows us that Eren is always the last person to believe it even when presented with evidence but in a situation like this he can't deny the truth. Reiner would likely cut off his limbs to stop him transforming and I doubt they'd tell Eren any information about the outside world or about the deaths of Armin and Mikasa. I say this because it's crucial they don't aggravate Eren more than necessary since they don't know for sure if he has the Founding Titan or not and whether he'd hypothetically be able to use his power. Rather than poking the bear too much, it would be safer to keep their cars close to their chest and not reveal any unnecessary information to their new prisoner. They'd begin their journey to the wharf that night and make good progress switching between the female and armoured titans. No doubt they'd reach their destination within like 24 hours, making sure no one gets eaten this time around. Upon arriving to the wharf, I imagine the situation is not how Eren imagined he'd see the ocean and he'd break down crying given the tragic circumstances. He doesn't know if Armin is even alive because the warriors aren't telling him anything and you know given his limbs are chopped off and he's being taken god knows where, it's just a very unfortunate situation. Zeke and Peak would arrive the following morning and from that point on the main priority is getting Eren back to Mali. We all know the oldest Jaeger brother has his own secret plans to euthanize the Eldian race with the power of the founding titan but the warriors don't really know if Eren has that titan like I said. Not even Eren himself knows he has the coordinate so Zeke has very few options right now. The only realistic way to find out which titan Eren has is for Zeke to touch his younger brother but he can't risk doing that because you know if he does it then Eren could destroy the world or do whatever he wants. This therefore presents an impossible situation for Zeke. 
If he doesn't do anything, then he knows Eren will be eaten once they get back to Mali. But on the other hand, if he does do something and touches Eren, his younger brother might gain the power to destroy the world. Given the uncertainty around Eren's abilities, I think the Malian ship would likely return straight back home, but maybe they'd still conduct a quick experiment on the citizens of Ragako. Beyond that, they have no reason to stay on Paradis any longer, and Eren would be brought back to the Malian continent immediately. In the short amount of time they'd have before Porco eats the Attack Titan, it's nearly impossible the Jaeger Bros would work together like they did in the main series. Even if Zeke managed to convince him they were brothers, Eren still has very few reasons to help a guy he's known for 5 minutes to sterilise the Eldian race. Maybe you could have a situation where he plays along but secretly plans to betray Zeke, however the time frame is so short I feel like Zeke wouldn't fall for it because Eren would just play along way too quickly. As a result, in this new reality Galliard does end up eating Eren and unknowingly inherits two shifters in the process. Whether Marley then goes back to Paradise depends on whether they can ascertain if Porco has the founder. From the beginning Marley's goal was to retake the founder for itself, so if Galliard has it then they can go to the island and wipe it out and also steal its natural resources. However, if they can't work out that he has it, then that makes things a lot more difficult. Let me know down below what you think would happen next, especially when it comes to Zeke because I kind of doubt that he would be able to convince Porco of his euthanization plan. As always, thank you guys for watching this video and be sure to hit that sub and like button if you want to see more stuff like this. Until the next one, peace out.